Good evening and welcome to this evening's Arts Commission meeting of June 1st, 2023. I call the meeting to order at 6 p.m. We will begin the meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance and we'll call on Commissioner Lucia to uh, present. Thank you. All right. Place your hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Commissioner. Ms. Viteri, will you call the roll, please? Commissioner Darian. Present. Commissioner Lucia. Present. Commissioner Mann. Present. Commissioner Ochoa. Present. Commissioner Zuckerman. Present. Vice Chair Wondercheck. Present. Chair Ashendorf. Present. We have quorum. Thank you very much. The first item of business this evening is a presentation uh, by Newport Mesa Unified School District uh, TOSA, Teacher on Special Assignment, Tamara Fairbanks. Welcome. And let's see if your mic is on here. Thank you for Wait. Hear me now? Oh, there you go. Yes. Thank you for having me tonight, and it's just my pleasure to present in front of you what we, is going on in our school district and all of the wonderful arts offerings that we have. Um, so we recently had some major district-wide events. Um, one of our largest events is our NMUSD Arts Showcase, which celebrates our students from middle school and high school. We hosted, and, thank, and um, I want to thank Orange Coast College for being our host um, this year for in, and, and we used O'Doyle Arts Pavilion for our showcases. So we had expanded awards this year for our district art showcase. So in addition to our best in show, we introduced our best in class mm -hmm. of each of our arts, art, art categories, as well as an award of excellence for our middle schoolers because we are just seeing such an expansion at the middle school level of talented artists. Um, our best in show, Kira Kirsch, received that top award this year. And on top of just the many things that are going on um, in our art department, we also have um, some celebrations. Alexandra Hernandez. Um, is our 2023 OC Artist of the Year for Fine Art. And, is, and one of the things that um, Kelly Marchbank, one of our visual art teachers at Costa Mesa High School, um, mentioned to me once we found out, um, she, when, when we found out she achieved this award, is that every art teacher had an investment in her. So throughout her entire years, throughout Costa Mesa, she has been involved in art and has experienced every art teacher in that department. And so, is, so everyone celebrated this achievement because they had a little, it was their little piece of, uh, this is what I helped to um, groom and create and to, um, and it was just exciting to see our students achieve in that manner. Uh, we also had several semifinalists through the OC Artist of the Year contest. So Jason Hufford was in instrumental music, um, Chandler Rose Green in commercial dance from Newport Harbor High School, Alexandria Schachter, um, also from Newport Harbor High School, Rachel Lawrence, in theater design at Costa Mesa High School, Olivia and then Olivia Sandoval in theater design for CDM, Corona Del Mar High School. We also have um, a really great, robust after school program. And so through um, state funding, through our Extended Learning Opportunities grants, we were able to actually have musicals and um, Arts and Learning Conservatory was 
was pivotal in that as well, going to many of our schools, producing all of these wonderful, wonderful school plays um, for us, and 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 as, and as well as um, some of our dance classes. So our arts partners were extremely pivotal in bringing opportunities for our students. And the one thing I have to um, admit, especially living in this area of Costa Mesa, is we have such a variety of arts nonprofits that are really student-centered and student-dedicated that, that we have been able to utilize in helping our kids achieve those ap opportunities after school. It's been quite the blessing, and we're hoping to actually grow more as a result of it. And so these are our, so these are our schools that really um, experience all of these programs. We are extended learning opportunities programs it was through our Project Kids Connect um, after school program and it's been um, pivotal in everything that we've been doing and, been, and we've received a lot of success through that. In addition to, and as we're talking about partnerships, Ballet Contempo, who, which is an art, um, which is a dance um, company through Jose Costas, who's also a professor at Orange Coast College, he did several assemblies every Friday. He would go to two schools, once in the morning, once in the afternoon, to actually do, teach our students about ballet folklorico. And they were great multimedia dance assemblies with just very rich um, cultural learning in the arts. And so he brought that not only to Orange Coast College and hosted assemblies there, but he also brought it to all of our element, to many of our elementary schools. We're in the process of adding more elementary schools in the fall and to early college high school. Um, he was able to actually do a performance on Cinco de Mayo um, that evening for our students in the community. Also, Backhouse Dance, another dance company, has um, they're renewing their residencies for both Back Bay and Corona Del Mar high schools. And um, we're trying to expand that to some of our other high schools. Um, all of our high schools for their residency assemblies, all of the high school dance programs were invited. And one of the pivotal um, moments during this past year's assembly was when we asked all of the dance te all of the dancers how much dance how much dance background did you come with prior to going to college and studying dance so we had one year of experience to many years of experience and and in each of those answers all of the students saw themselves because it doesn't matter how late you, how early or late you get into the game, if you have that love and that passion, you can achieve um, having a career in that talent. And so that was very inspiring for all of our high school students. Um, in addition to that, all of our elementary students at both Sonora and Woodland Elementary Schools had Dance for Kindness um, assemblies, and those in the dance and is um, these are assemblies where they're using dance movements to show connectedness, to show friendship, to show leaning and supporting each other. And through, the, and through movement and through the teaching of dance, they're actually learning character. And so it's been a very um, unique, but very inspiring program for our young students. And as we're closing our school year, next week is the end of the school year, we're looking at all of the variety of opportunities that we're in the process of doing. So be, thanks to Prop 28 funds and other types of funding, we are planning on having a shared drama position at both T. Winkle and Astacia schools, which is going to be great because that way that same teacher can help build the program at Estancia. And by the time we get that theater 
right in place, we'll have a large program at both schools. And that's, and that's the vision for that. Um, we're hiring theater techs for Estancia to actually help with the load of trying to take care of all of our performing arts facilities. We're finally breaking ground on that theater, which I'm extremely excited about. It's a long time coming. Um, we're renovating New Pearl Harbor's theater at this year, so that's, so as crazy as that is, because we're down an extra theater, we're hoping that that will actually be done in by fall. Addition, and then we're actually getting additional music teachers, guest coaches, and artists at the secondary level, just so we can enhance all of our students' learning in the arts and giving them some really career um, perspectives and experiences from people from professionals out professionals in the field at the elementary level we're expanding our summer school enrichment program so we had a, actually last year we had expanded arts enrichment in the afternoons of our summer school programs we're continuing that at our, all of our school sites and we're utilizing both music specialists as well as arts partners um, we're continuing and expanding all of our arts opportunities after school. We're, um, for visual art, we're strategizing the implementation of visual art at the elementary level. And we're actually beginning, the st beginning our renovations for our multi-purpose rooms. So our elementary schools have had, um, in our multi-purpose rooms, they have been neglected. <laughs> they were not considered a priority for actually using, utilizing them as a theater. And now our district is actually investing in them to be utilized as theaters and to actually have a good performance space for each of our elementary schools. And that begins this year at East Bluff Elementary. They're the first to undergo the renovations for our sound and theater renovations. And then we acquired two portable sound systems. In the meantime, we have our portable sound systems that we're utilizing for our musicals. And we just acquired our second one that way for our summer programs and for our after school programs, we can actually have, you can actually hear the students while they are performing on stage. Some of, our, some of our schools have great sound systems, some of them don't, so we wanna make sure that there's equal opportunity to have for the kids to feel successful in whatever they're doing. And, and um, one of our goals is more venues to display, and one of our next steps in one of our goals is to actually find more and more venues to display student art and thank you and thank you the city and i want to thank the city for actually allowing us to display our art this year because that has been a motivator because we want to find more places local places where our students can be displayed and so we can showcase our students vi visually um, we're looking for more opportunities to work with local businesses in career education and technical education. And so I have teamed up with CT, our CTE department, career technical education department, to see what opportunities we can do for not only the kids who are taking CTE courses, but what career educational experiences we can give to the entire district, as well as professional development and resources for our teachers. So we're working on a variety of ideas. Now, at the, and one of the fun and saddest things <laughs> to talk about is the end of an era, because we have two major pioneers in our district retiring this year. Mm -hmm. Joe DeKino of New Pearl Harbor High School, the theater teacher, he's been working tirelessly for many, many years, as well as Sandy Gilbo. Both are pioneers in instrumental music. They are both pioneers and there will be gravely missed. And at the same time, whoever fills their shoes, they're gonna be, they have to be a powerhouse person because they're leaving two powerhouse positions. But it's, it's exciting. I'm excited for them as they retire. And at the same time, it's, it's the end of a golden era and looking for a new golden era. And, and also, we're excited about Smart Camp. 
and teaming up with the city of Costa Mesa for our smart camp. And we're just really excited about that. And, and kids are excited about it. And we just looking forward to all of the great partnerships that we have locally. And that's all I have. Any questions? Well, Tamara, I have to tell you, every time you, I, I can speak for the commission, but I'll let them say a few words as well, but what you share with us is really important because it really does underscore the breadth of the arts in our community. So thank you very much. I do hope that as we lead into the new school year, we look forward to that calendar of events yes. that you provided earlier yes. because that really does help us spread the word and attend where we can. Um, I'd also like to say I thought that this year at uh, OCC, this was the first year middle schoolers were included. Is that correct? Is that what you said? Yes. That's exciting. When I was there, I happened, I was fortunate to see Miss Hernandez pottery or ceramics and it was stunning. Her work is yes. really, really stunning. So thank you very much. Other comments by commissioners? Yes, Vice Chair. Um, Tamara, just bravo to you, leading the helm within the Newport Mesa School District with the arts, and just excited to see the investment that the district is making into the arts. It's, it's just wonderful. I mean, the list goes on and on and on, and it's exciting to see. Um, I was so excited when I saw that Artist of the Year coming from Newport Mesa School District. And any of us here on the panel, if, if you're not familiar with that Artist of the Year competition, it's stiff. I yes. believe there were like 750 yes. kids that competed. And for Newport Mesa to have the number one artist mm -hmm. is amazing. Yeah. So hats off to all of the arts teachers in this district that invested in the live of, lives of that winner. And again, I'm excited to see all of the investment the district is making into our youth in the city and their future. So thank you. Any other comments? Yes, Commissioner Zuckerman. Thank you. I haven't met you before, and, uh, and your reputation precedes you. And I, I love uh, the extensiveness of your presentation and your energy. And, and um, I love how you honored the people who are retiring and you gave uh, a hopeful message for their replacements. And as you were ending your presentation, you were talking about professional development opportunities for teachers yes. as well as uh, internships or technical training for students. Uh, the Orange County Museum of Art would be happy to participate and partner. So maybe we could follow up yes. afterwards as well. Yes. So I, I switched my hats right at the end there. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Any other comments? Yes, Commissioner Mann. Hi. Hi. Um, I have heard your name so many times. I used to be PTA president at Victoria Elementary, and um, my kids, I think, I want to say I remember when you did this first smart school um, thing over at Post Mesa High School, and it was so successful. And I'm just shocked that it's free. You know, there's this amazing, like you said, all these nonprofit organizations that are offering all of this amazing art and you know for to be taught to our kids here um, I know how hard ceramics is my son brought home his ceramics stuff today from school and <laughs> it was nothing like the you know artist of the year ceramics but I mean, that was really beautiful what she made and I'm always so inspired by our students and all of the kids um, in Post Mesa that do what they do and what a lot of times people like you and other people are able to offer here. Um, I was really happy to hear about the NPRs because when I was PTA president, that was my big thing. I was like, we need to fix this NPR for our pr little productions. I know it's in elementary school, but I mean, it, it was so neglected. And mm -hmm. I just feel like that um, the school district, they, they were dealing with air conditioning units and other stuff at the time. So I'm thrilled to hear that that's like a priority at the moment and that's where they're gonna be putting some of their money. Cause I think, um, you know, no one likes to be hot and everything, but I mean, we all get inspired and we can actually do things in any condition with art, you know, behind us. And um, so I'm, I'm a big fan of yours as well. And I really loved your presentation. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. Any other comments? 
Yes, Commissioner Ochoa. Um, in addition to being um, Artosa, Tam Tamara is aware of many hats as well as most art workers. And she stepped in and came to the rescue of Woodland Elementary Spring um, recital. So thank you, Ms. Fairbanks, for doing that. And um, look forward to supporting um, the student-centered um, programs that you're leading. Thank you. And we'd be remiss if we didn't acknowledge you for putting together a a Zoom which included Commissioner Ochoa so that she can be involved and representative for Newport Mesa Unified School. So thank you and and um, also Scott Fitzgerald. That was really, Fitzpatrick, that was really wonderful. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, have a good summer. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. All right, we'll now move on to public comments. Uh, Ms. Pateri, is there anyone um, uh, on Zoom who wishes to address the commission? Chair, there are no members on Zoom. All right, thank you very much. Then we will close public comment. Now is time for commissioner comments, and why don't we begin with you, Commissioner Derdarian. <clears throat> thank you, Chair. Uh, I just have a quick comment. I was able to uh, attend the study session uh, of the City Council last month and was really delighted to see as they were considering uh, questions relating to the uh, arts budget for the, the coming year that out of the six public, uh, the six people who made public comments, uh, three of us were there for the arts. And I know I was talking with uh, Commissioner Ochoa and she was saying how many more had written in. So I'm, I'm really pleased to see that there was such a uh, outpouring of mm -hmm. public interest um, and support for the arts budget. And, and I'm very hopeful for the future of the arts here in, in Costa Mesa. Thank you. Commissioner Ochoa. I'll save my comments for the end, thank you. All right, Commissioner Zuckerman. I think I'll save my comments. All again, right. So thank you. Vice Chair Wondercheck. I have comments for the end as well. I see a trend yes. coming. <laughs> All right, Commissioner Lucia, you're going to break that trend? Yeah, I'll go All now. Right. Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to plug uh, an exhibit that I'm going to be attending. Um, it's happening in uh, north of here in the city of Fullerton at the Fullerton Museum Center, which is a nonprofit. It goes through the beginning of August. It's called Looking Back, Moving Forward, The Wisdom of Older Women. Um, and it features 49 photographs by the award-winning photographer and author Donna Edman from her book, Women of Wisdom, answering the question, what would you tell your 20-year-old self? Hmm. So I think for women of any age, young girls, wherever you are, I think that this is a really wonderful opportunity um, to see some moving art pieces. They're also going to have an interactive art installation and then a variety of multimedia artwork available as well as a co-op night where you can do a wine and create experience and then a women's festival. So it's really exciting to see uh, female focused artists being showcased in the community. So I brought these in case anyone wanted to. Thank you. Yeah. Commissioner Mann. Uh, yeah, I'll go ahead. Um, this is uh, more on the line of a suggestion. Um, so because at this moment in my life, um, I've been really busy with my kids and sports and, um, and occasionally some art. Um, it's really hard for me like to have like a date night or have some night where I'm like, oh, I want to go out and I want to see this. What do I want to see? Do I want to see a movie? Do I want to see a play? Do I want to go see music? Do I want what art venues are open? Um, and what are they showing, this and that. And I was just thinking that, um, and I'm sure that this is in the works somewhere, and I was talking to someone earlier, um, a website, a some kind of, or I know in other cities, big cities like LA or whatever, they have kind of one big um, paper that has everything arts available. And it's something that is const, it's like, well, obviously it's a team of people who constantly update and input everything in it with the information of the shows. I'm sure a lot of it's, some of it's free. I remember when I was doing plays in LA and you'd get like, you know, some free, not advertising, but they would mention your show is here, your show is here, just as free information. And then there was the paid advertising we'd have to put out. But um, I just really, I know there are certain places that have certain information, but I was wondering if there's any way at some point 
um, of the city putting together a website that would have all that information. Or it's not a website. Well, like I said, we're not using paper anymore, really, so a magazine would be out of the question. I know we have Spotlight, but um, it would be kind of like Spotlight, but really just the focus on only art. You know, and um, that would be theater, opera, film, fine art, music, alternative arts, where, when, the running time duration. And um, so I just wanted to put that out there because I don't know if anybody, um, if there's, I haven't seen anything like that really. And I was just wondering if anyone was thinking about that or had any plans on doing anything like that. That's all. Thank you. All right, I have just a couple comments. I too would like to underscore what Commissioner Dardarian said. Um, and thank the commissioners who spoke, who sent letters, and the residents and the artists who came out. Um, the, their words were heard loud and clearly, and I do hope we'll get an update from um, staff uh, later on in the meeting as to what the next step is with and where the budget process is with city council. Um, there's, there's still time to uh, see, I believe, the, the LEAPS art program and, and the lobby at City Hall, and that's for our three to five-year-old kiddos who participate in, in a program at Balearic Park. Um, and it was really nice to see that a paved parking lot turned into paradise last weekend with the symphony on the go. I have to tell you, it was wonderful. Um, we had people walking across the street with their walkers and wheelchairs and caregivers from the towers. We had people coming in on their bicycles, carrying their lawn chairs with them. Little kids, older kids. It was really nice. Thank you, City. Thank you, Pacific Symphony. It was a lot of fun, and I'm looking forward to the next one. We'll hear more about that later. Um, lastly, I hope we'll get an update on Art Venture so that artists and a community can begin to be prepared for that next event. All right. Um, next item is the uh, approval of the adoption of the minutes from the May 4th meeting. And to commissioners who were not at the last meeting, you can still make a motion and or vote on this, so we will um, entertain a motion on the minutes. I made one. Thank you. We, um, and um, I will second that. So it was moved by Commissioner Zuckerman and uh, seconded. By me, but it's not going on. You just have to. Just one second, please. All right, thank you. Now. Are we ready to vote? It's loading. You'll be able to do your second motion in just one moment. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Okay, if you may do your motion once again, Commissioner Zuckerman, and then the second motion. Okay, so we have a first motion by uh, Vice Chair Wonderchak and second motion by Chair Ashendorf. You may vote on your dais now. Motion carry 7-0 to approve the May 4th meeting minutes. Thank you, Ms. Pateri. The next item, is new business item number one, murals on private property. Ms. Garner. Thank you, Chair Ashendorf, and good evening to the Arts Commission of Costa Mesa. The murals on private property review, this will be a discussion and review for us. Um, the reason I brought this initiative forward is that we do have um, Northgate Market has plans to present on a mural for their property at the August Arts Commission. Once we discuss and review this newly drafted mural permit application and process for murals on private property, um, then we can kind of address that presentation in August. Um, the mural permit application with review process is in draft form currently. I mocked something up that's in your packet. 
and something we can discuss and alter as needed tonight, this evening at, at this meeting. Uh, before we get started with any discussion around this agenda report, I have a few things to take note of. Uh, the Art and Public Places report has been included as a reference, so most of the content for this agenda report um, comes from that document. Um, the sign standards are part of the City of Costa Mesa zoning code, and as um, the staff works to create processes for murals on private property, my recommendation in collaboration with our Economic and Development Services Department and the City Clerk's Office would be to add additional information to this code, specific definitions for the word mural and mural artist and the new mural requirements provided. This would create a sustainable mural process for the city as a whole moving forward for all new business um, businesses planning to open in Costa Mesa. So that's kind of what that the sign standards that I put in your packet are about. Um, and then also as part of creating sustainable processes for public art within the city, uh, staff may consider including the mural permit application in our new land management um, system. I think I put services in the report, so my apologies, that's an error. Um, so the land management system software, it's in process of being implemented citywide. So a little bit about this software. Um, the software will allow for customers to apply for Costa Mesa permits remotely. Currently, the permits may be special event permits, business licenses, um, encroachment, building inspections, film permits, residential alterations and additions, cannabis, et cetera. Um, through the system, the customer and or business owner may submit applications, upload documents, provide all their contact information, view status of application, view staff reviews and input, and submit payment. The LMS software will facilitate and streamline interdepartment review, auto-generate permits and reports, create mailing lists, and store all data into a singular cloud, while also becoming a part of public record. So I believe this would be a useful tool in helping the city track and keep records of all murals on private property moving forward. So that's what that, that piece is about. And also I've included two examples from other cities for reference, which I also used to create this first draft of an application with the mural requirements. I've also included the federal and state laws regarding artists' rights within the realm of public art that will be um, important for the city to be aware of as we implement new processes. And lastly, as part of this new process for murals on private property, um, the Arts Commission will be the community body that gives input and recommendations for the beautification of the city, but should function as a review board and will in no way interfere with First Amendment rights in regards to free speech. So I just wanted you all to know that and keep that in mind. In the near future, we'll, we will be discussing murals on public buildings and walls owned by the city, and that process will be distinctly different from this one. Um, and then we'll allow for more control in regards to the content of murals on public property. So I just wanted you to all know those pieces before we discuss, and that's it. Thank you, Ms. Garner. Um, questions or comments from commissioners? Yes, Vice Chair Wondercheck. Oh, I just moved my mic, that's all. <laughs> Actually, I wanna I commend you if the research that you did with having these particular um, safeguards in place for the city and its residents. So thank you very much for the work that you've committed to this. Other comments? Yes, Commissioner Ochoa. Uh, thank you, Lorette. This is a wonderful um, application um, that you put together. Um, I had a question. You did mention that there will be a definition of a mural included. Would it be on this document or a separate document? I was... I would most likely use the one that was in the Art and Public Places report that you had approved in April. Yes. Yeah. Great. Yes, Commissioner Zuckerman. So I appreciate the distinction between murals on private property and murals on public property. And I, I think it makes sense that murals on private property still come before the Arts Commission, and mm -hmm. I just really want to underscore the honoring of people's private property and their ability to do what they want on private property. So I just think that's a, uh, a really important thing to underscore. Any other comments? Oh, I just had a question. Yeah. Um, in both of the attached example applications, um, San Clemente, they charge a $60 filing fee for the permit, and then San Fernando charged $130. Uh, are we going to be charging a fee for the permit application? 
That's something that we'll discuss as staff. Um, mm -hmm. My preference would be to keep as minimal as possible because I do want us to really have this as an accessible document and not be too much of a barrier because we are the city of the arts. So, yeah. Thank you. Uh, yes, Commissioner Derdarian. Thank you. Uh, I just want to uh, echo uh, Vice Chair Wondercheck's uh, comments on the research that was done to ensure that standards are kept up. I think that's wonderful. Uh, and in line with that, I noticed on the example of the San Clemente um, application that there was a time limit of, I think, two years for the permit. Now, I'm not necessarily advocating for a time limit on, time limit on ours uh, for Costa Mesa, but I was just wondering if there was any thought given to that uh, and, uh, well, what your thoughts are. Yeah, I, I did think about that. Um, I didn't want to be too strict with kind of you know, laying things out for people because again, that's private property. So I didn't necessarily want to be, you know, too constrictive, but it is something we can talk about with staff, you know, mainly for beautification purposes and making sure things are looking nice and there's not graffiti and just kind of maintenance purposes. I would say that's something that we could discuss, but it'll definitely be discussion between departments, what that might look like. Yeah. Great. Well, and, and I think too, with the uh, standards that you put in place to ensure they're kept uh, up to standard, or uh, kept well and maintained well. Um, that would hopefully address those concerns that I imagine to your time limit would uh, would would be placing for the permit. Uh, no further comments yeah. or questions for me. Thank you, um, Loretta. I had a question. I, I know we're looking at a, the future, but currently, as the master plan indicates, we have approximately 40 murals, at least 40 murals throughout the city, and we can't go back and change things. But how, how do we look at those murals and ensure that they are um, kept up, that they're not, the paint isn't you know, falling apart, and that, that they're maintained, basically? Yeah, so I think that those um, would be almost kind of grandfathered in, but with this new kind of look at maybe the zoning and putting some mural requirements in there, it may be something that we kind of look at as more of an enforcement thing, just making sure and kind of get a fresh peek at everything before moving forward with the new process. So I think once we start looking into um, maybe discussing it as a you know part of the zoning code, that that'll come up and we can kind of you know go from there as there's things that need some extra attention. Great, thank you. Other questions? Uh, do we open this up to public comment, uh, Lorette? Is there, now it would be the time. Thank you, Ms. Vatira. Chair, there are no members on Zoom. All right, then we would close public comment. Um, if I could yes. just chime in, uh, Lorette kind of touched on it, but the city will be launching it's the land management system. For those of yeah. you that don't know what that is, um, they've given it a more friendly name. Um, her name will be Tessa, T-E-S-S-A. Um, there will be quite a bit of outreach done um, in the next couple of months um, from you know citywide because of all the, the different applications that can be used through Tessa. Um, it gives the public more access to some of the things Lorette mentioned, uh, building permits, planning permits, things like that. It will also incorporate kind of workflow within the city. Um, in terms of like it will replace, end up replacing the app that is currently used to report graffiti or shopping carts or things like that or other hazards. So there'll be a significant amount of training and outreach that's done uh, once TESA is fully implemented, which we were, were, I think they're targeting July. So you'll hear more about that. This would be one of the processes, you know, a very small portion of it because there's so much to the, the TESA program. Um, that is going to be very exciting. Just, you know, kind of stay tuned and there will be more information on that coming from city council. Um, it probably won't be a direct presentation for, for the commission because of, you know, the small bit, but we might be able to do a, an example just so that you as residents or those of you that are residents understand what it is in case you can use it or recommend it to other people you deal with. That's it. So we're, we would be retiring Costa Mesa app and, and with someone who has a name now. <laughs> is that what Potentially, I don't know if, if her app is gonna have a different name or a baby, <laughs> baby child, I don't know, but we'll see. Thank, thank you. All right, I, I think that, you know, Ms. Garner, with, with every action that we take month after month, reviewing, reviewing different segments 
of the master plan, we get a much better understanding. And also what we do is that we really make sure that all of the pieces fit into the vision of the master plan. And I'm really excited about that because the mural, this whole mural process also goes a long way to support the vision with creativity and enrichment of lives and civic pride in our city. So um, we're really looking forward to seeing this part of the master plan. And, and just one more note that this, the first review, um, you know, hopefully that will be on the agenda in August. It will be, you know, an opportunity for all of you as commissioners to go through it for the first time, other than maybe one of you that was on it during the arts committee, because the arts committee reviewed some murals. Um, but it is kind of a, a work in progress, not to say that, you know, Laura hasn't put extensive effort into it, but once we, you know, you won't know what you don't know until you go through the process for the first time. So we do want to keep the the review process going um, eventually some of the policies mm -hmm. could be turned into actual ordinances or codes um, but i think the more time we have to kind of feel out the process make sure it's accessible things like the fee or the application yeah. fee that were brought up you know is that something we want to do we want to keep it free to encourage you know private businesses to to put up murals so it's very exciting but you know still in the groundbreaking phase so thank you thank you very much thank you miss garner no other comments? All right, then we'll, we'll um, move on to monthly reports. Uh, arts and culture report, Ms. Garner. And excuse me, Chair, we'll be taking a motion to uh, file and receive that last report. Thank you, I apologize for that, okay. Um, I'd like to, do we have a, yes, we have a motion made by Commissioner Ochoa, seconded by Commissioner Lucia. We'll call for the question. Thank you. Motion carries seven zero to file and receive. Thank you very much, Ms. Pateri. All right, now we'll move on to Ms. Garner. Okay, for the arts and culture report for this evening, let me get this PowerPoint started. The art crawl experience, I know Commissioner Mann will be excited about this, I hope. So, <laughs> so our next art crawl experience will coincide with National Arts and Humanities Month. Um, this might be obvious, but this art crawl will have a theater theme and highlight the great work being done in the theater arts here in Costa Mesa. So Costa Mesa Playhouse will give a tour of their space and showcase uh, a short skit from one of their productions, and they will also they may also host an interactive theater experience. And then our second stop will be South Coast Repertory, and they will be celebrating their 60th anniversary this mm. fall, and will host a guest speaker and a full production of Quixote Nuevo. So that's I'll have more details kind of coming, but that's the beginning stages of that one, and that'll be October 21st. So. We'll get to that one in a second, but arts grants. So we did have one grantee drop out, the Friends of the Costa Mesa Libraries. Um, they had some permitting issues with the box because it's owned by a different company, um, and that's a county library. And if, so on the were, wrong slide. Oh, no, no, I just don't have one for that. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. But thank you, right. Director Mentor. <laughs> so, well, I didn't know what to put for the arts grants. I thought it would be interesting for you to look at, so. <laughs> So the total dispersed funding for this fiscal year will be 5,000 instead of the 5,500. And let's see, I think, did I do? Nope, I didn't do that for that. Okay, do not have a slide for this next one either. For free park performances, as Chair Ashendorf mentioned, we had our first free park performance with Symphony on the Go on May 27th, and I think it was a great success. We had a little over 100 people, and it was really fun, and it was just like a nice pop-up event where people could just come and listen to a brass quintet, and so that was really fun to see, and that was our first one. And we even had someone climb up on their roof so they could listen in the neighborhood, <laughs> which I thought was great. So, I hope, I mean, I hope he was safe. <laughs> So I did see him come down safely, so I think we're good. Uh, <laughs> so for uh, free park performances, some good news. We have um, the next one coming up June 18th at Balearic Community Center in Costa Mesa. 
And then we have two new added dates uh, due to the generosity of our fifth district supervisor, Katrina Foley, and the American Rescue Plan um, Act that supports arts and music and parks. So she's designated some money to Pacific Symphony so that we are able to do two more. And those details are pending, but we're thinking late August and late September for those and at different parks, kind of at different districts. And also, I'm working with uh, Donald Dungan Library staff to host a performance for the Day of the Dead with Martin Espino, I'm not sure if I pronounced his last name, so my apologies, on the Lions Park lawn for the end of October that will support current library programming. So I'm excited to kind of do some collaboration with the county libraries. Let's see. All right, and the next one, public art and utility box art program. This slide is of the Butterfly Garden, so this will be our first permanent public art project with the city manager's office. We're getting close to seeing this come to fruition. We have it currently in the contracting process, and as soon as that's finished, um, she'll get to work on those butterflies. They look, they'll look very much like this photo here. And then this other picture of the landscape is, is the hill that, where they're gonna reside. And there's a really nice butterfly sign at the bottom by that white fence there, if you can see that. But they've worked on doing a lot of landscaping. I don't know if anyone has been down there by Marina View Park in Costa Mesa, but it didn't look like that for a long time. So it looks really nice and they're really improving that space. So uh, Marisa Balbazan is a Panamanian artist living and working in Los Angeles, and she's known for her colorful and organic artwork, and she does a lot of butterflies. So we're really excited to see these kind of in this space. Um, and that's for, you know, coming, and as more as we get farther in that process, I'll be sure to keep you all updated and kind of take a look. And our utility box art program, we have six new boxes. So we had quite a few for or um, excuse me, Orange Coast College. They are celebrating their 75th anniversary, so they had a bunch just right there on um, the main road by the college on Fairview Road and different side streets. And then we also have an artwork by David Levy there, box number 17, it's a dragonfly. And these are the other two, sorry, excuse me, five boxes. And then I just wanted to make a couple of brief announcements. Next month, we will not have a meeting. We'll be, um, what? <laughs> we will have a brief hiatus. I was trying to think of the words. I'm gonna be on vacation and there's a lot of stuff going on in July. So we're gonna move that to August as our next meeting. So we will not have a meeting next month. And then we are nothing without our Lorette, apparently. <laughs> so. I'm taking a re really long, inconvenient vacation. So <laughs> my apologies. Um, so that, and then I, in regards to the budget, the budget, the final budget meeting, Jason will, you want to talk about it? Yeah. Jason will talk about that. Okay. So I'll leave that to Jason. Excuse me, Director Mentor. That's what I was trying to listen to Monique. <laughs> budget. I'll do the budget. I'll do the budget. <laughs> I'm trying to be formal. <laughs> <laughs> and okay, so I, since uh, Director Mentor will talk about the budget, um, that concludes my arts and culture staff report. So thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Garner. Thank you, Lorette. Uh, with regards to the budget, thank you for those that, that wrote in, spoke um, at the City Council study session. It was uh, amazing to see the, the support. I think the council was a bit overwhelmed and, and we're very happy that included in the proposed budget that will be going before City Council this coming Tuesday, um, there is a line item to fully fund years one and two, which are which are near complete, um, but based on the way the funding is generated through the cannabis sales tax, uh, we got ourselves into a bit of a hole because the cannabis revenue wasn't coming in fast mm -hmm. enough. So there is a line item where we're asking council to fill that hole with general fund money and then fully fund the programs that were identified in year three of the arts and culture master plan. Uh, that does not include the showmobile. That was a, a big component of it. Um, but we will keep that in mind for, for future years. But we are very excited to get the full support, um, you know, for years one and two, obviously, and then, you know, the upcoming year three. Um, at this time, it is part of the proposed budget, yep. so the city council still has to adopt it. Uh, we as staff are hoping that the budget gets adopted um, and it's many different components on Tuesday. If there are questions or major changes necessary, it could get pushed back to the later meeting in June. 
uh, or additional study session, depending on what the, the conversations are. But very excited. Thank you for your support. And um, we look forward to uh, you all tuning in on Tuesday to watch the budget hearing. Thank you, Director Mentor. Are there any other staff comments at this time? I have, I have some comments. Yes. If you don't mind. We'll, we'll move to com final commissioner comments. So I just wanted to make sure everyone was aware that Juneteenth, our national holiday, is coming up on the 17th. I'm sorry, the 19th of June. That is Juneteenth Day. And I just wanted to share with you a few wonderful Juneteenth events happening in our county that we can all be part of. Uh, there is one on June 10th called Gospel Voices of Orange County. That's going to be held at Chapman University. It is a beautiful event. It's more of an experience, everyone, where you're gonna see African-American lives chronicled through choral works. There's gonna be a gospel choir, dance, orchestra, band, jazz music, gospel music, spoken word, um, with more than 75 or close to 100 performers on stage uh, at Chapman University. Arts and Learning Conservatory is the one that's putting it on and um, I'm very excited about it. It's going to take us from um, enslavement period right before Juneteenth, uh, which would have been 1865, to today. So I'll just put it like this. If you are a history buff and love education, you wanna be a part of this, it's going to feel more like a gospel Sunday brunch. You're gonna be on your feet, you're gonna stomp your feet, clap your hands, get involved. It's a wonderful celebration. It's really an experience you won't want to miss. So that's June 10th, and you can purchase tickets at muscocenter.org, and you want to be a part of that. Also on the 17th of June at Centennial Park, it's going to be a Juneteenth festival. That's going to be more like your barbecue picnic, uh, get ready to do the electric slide, <laughs> that type of thing in the park. It'll be from 11 a.m. until 6 p.m. on the 17th right here in Santa Ana. And then on the 18th, the city of Irvine at the, at the hangar will be doing a huge Juneteenth celebration, and that's through the NAACP partnered with the city of Irvine. And that one was huge. Thousands of people came out for that as well. So there's no excuse. There's some place to go for Juneteenth to celebrate and just remember our history and to celebrate our future. So I hope you all come out for that. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chair. Other comments? Yes, Commissioner Ochoa. Um, Alicia Rojas, the artist responsible for the mural on Baker Street. Um, she has a wonderful exhibition at uh, Grand Art Central in downtown Santa Ana, and um, I love the title of the exhibition. It's um, with honey in the mouth, Camille in la boca, and examines the poetic parallels between human migration and bee migration, and um, it's expressed in these wonderful uh, beeswax sculptures. So. Um, and she got a great write-up in the LA Times recently, so it's just wonderful to see an artist who's um, made something in Costa Mesa and um, is, you know, garnering the success outside of Costa Mesa. Thanks. Thank you. C Commissioner Zuckerman? So I am going to miss the August meeting. Uh, so we'll see if we can uh, look at the mural proposal in advance of that, because I'm super curious what that's going to be like. And um, wanted to just say that the Daniel Arsham show at the Orange County Museum of Art is closing on Sunday. So if you haven't seen it or you want to see it for your first or second or fifth or twelfth time, uh, you have until Sunday. And we do um, have uh, some upcoming exhibitions the week of the 22nd of June, including public talks, and we're doing a major Alice Neal exhibition. And I'm really excited about it because it's about family and pets. So I think people will really be able to see themselves in that. Also an exhibition um, with an artist named Tony Lewis who is inspired uh, and doing a, a site-specific mural work inside, um, inspired by Calvin and Hobbes, and then and a Chinese female artist named Yuji is doing sculpture as well. So very diverse exhibitions and of course, free and open to the public, everyone's welcome. Thank you, any other closing comments? 
All right. Oh, wait, I see. Miss Villasenor. I'm just going to add in while everybody talks about the events. We do have something a little bit larger than the small park performances. We have some big concerts that are going to be happening next month. So I just wanted to plug those. Um, the first one being our July 3rd Independence Day celebration at the fairgrounds in the parking lot. Um, that's a rather large event, but it does entail some art. We have a couple of bands playing. There's going to be music, dancing, all kinds of fun. Um, we are celebrating our 70th anniversary as a city. So uh, uh, we expect lots of fun, lots of food, lots of dancing, lots of everything. So make sure you come on out for that. And then we also have our uh, concerts in the park at Fairview Park in the month of July, every Tuesday. So the 11th, 18th, and 25th, um, come on out. It's a big band. There's a beer and wine garden. There's food trucks. So I encourage you all to come out to the concerts in July. July 3rd also has fireworks. Fireworks, don't forget the fireworks. That's the one part of the event I get to plan and she leaves it out. <laughs> I was focusing on the arts aspects, so. Now we consider fireworks artistic. Okay, come on now. All right, well. Actually, can I make one yes, more comment? Please. I just wanna um, underscore what you were saying as well about uh, what an honor and a privilege it is to sit on this Arts Commission and how much progress has been made in uh, the few short months that we've been in place. And it's just exciting to see the infrastructure evolving. And mm -hmm. that was one of the things that I was really committed to in terms of joining the Arts Commission because there's you know unbounded creativity and it's really important to start, I think, with, with structure. Yeah. And so I'm really happy with the, the positions and um, procedures that we put in place. And, you know, I'm big on the budget, so I'm also really pleased with how that's gone. So. I think that, you know, we talked before about advocacy and the, the commission took that to heart in getting ready for the budget study session. Yeah. But, you know, at no point should it ever end. You know, every month, every event is an, act, an opportunity to continue to push that message about, hey, this is what we're doing with what you've given us. Think of, think of what we can do with more. I think you, as a commission, really focused on grants, you know, and we need to be able to have more grant money. So that is always going to be something that I hope the commission advocates for, is finding additional funding sources to support other arts organizations in the city. So please continue your advocacy. You've proven that you can do it. You've proven that they'll listen. So, you know, keep it up and, and we can continue to grow this, you know, more and more each year. So thank you for that. Can I also add to that is that I know why while we are still building an audience for our commission meetings, um, that doesn't mean that people at home, and I've said this before at our other commission meetings, that people at home are not watching. This is live streamed on YouTube. So I know a lot of people watch online live a lot. So, and it's something that's not, you don't see on Zoom. So, um, so even though sometimes our audience might be a little liked, that doesn't mean that you know your voices aren't being heard um, in real time. Thank you, Ms. Villasenor. Well, with no other comments, no matter how you celebrate June, dads or grads or vacations or Juneteenth, make it an artful June, and we are adjourned until August 3rd. Thank you. <laughs>